Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our second campfire of uh, on the mark of the Jota Jody uh, weekend. So we had our first campfire a few hours ago, and tonight, well, so today it depends on the hour you are. We want to introduce a new, a new campfire and a new present. So tonight we have um, viewers from Australia, Cairo, Montreal just to, to mention some, some, some of them. My name is Luis, and I'll be your host for this campfire. And now we will hear about an exciting scouting program that is uh, happening in Belgium, which is a proof of the success of scouting in Region Altuo. As you know, after this uh, presentation finish, we will have the opportunity to submit questions, and our presenter will be able to answer them. So remember, remember to submit your questions. There's actually, if you, if you go down, you can see a button that, that says questions and topics. There you have a, an orange button, and there you can submit your questions for the presenter to see them and actually answer them at the end of the, of the presentation. So now, I would like to introduce Carlin uh, Readers. Carlin has been a leader for three years in ACABI, which is a scouting for children with and without disability in Belgium. For the last five years, She's been a volunteer member of Team Diversity of Scouting in Gitsen van, van Leden, one of the five Scout Federations in Belgium. This small but highly motivated team worked on the organization's strategy on diversity through providing training, information, and, and other projects. The most recent project is the inclusion of L L LGBTQI people in Scouting. Although having a hearing disability, she never let this stop her enthusiastic commitment to all projects on she works on. Carlin works as a volunteer leader in ACABI in Belgium, which promotes scouting for young people who have disabilities, as well as those reaching out to those living in poverty. She will talk of the open camp where children from poor backgrounds are able to experience a scout camp. The Uitiquer, it's a colorful box full of games and materials to support children living in these neighborhoods. So please help me welcome Karen. Uh, Karen, are you there? Hello. Hello. We will now. All right. Okay. So. Hello. Uh, okay. Go. Hello. That's it. Okay. All you yours. Can see me and hear me. Um, 
I will start with the things I'm gonna tell. So first, uh, some general introduction. Uh, in Scouts and Gids of Vlaanderen, different volunteers work together uh, in different teams on a national level. Uh, team Diversity, where I am a member of, is one of such a team. We do and did many different projects about diversity, and I want to tell you more about three of those successful projects. The first thing I want to tell about is AKB. So, all Flemish scouts and guides have seen our boys and girls with a mental or physical disability, or have at least heard of them. Those boys and girls play the game of scouting with the same devotion as anybody else and ask for the same chances and challenges, but needing a bit more of special attention. So the name AKB is an abbreviation in Dutch and means something like otherwise can be and is possible. Uh, otherwise in different meanings, um, just as thick or thin, physically or mentally disabled, big or small. So every youngster is welcome to play the wonderful game of scouting. AKB is a tradition in Flanders for about 50 years um, and has now for more than 1,000 members embedded in the national structure of Scouts and Gids of Vlaanderen. Um, the structure of AKB, AKB consists of three sorts of groups. First of all, there is the so-called full AKB groups who are generally made up of only or mainly members with a physical or mental disability. Further, second, there are regular groups with a specific AKB branch connected to them. So leaders come from a regular working and introduce the general principles of scouting. Last but not least, uh, there are regular groups who support uh, the idea of inclusion. One, uh, one or several people with a disability um, find their place uh, and are accepted between the valid members. It's a beautiful idea uh, which learns us a lot about tolerance and getting along with each other. In theory, Scouting is open for everyone, um, so in general we promote inclusion, a mixture of disabled and valid members, but in each sort of group the carrying capacity um, of each group must be preserved. So, and not every leader has the expertise to work with children in special needs. Some young people with a disability ask a lot of individual attention and care, what not every group can offer. So, uh, in AKB, scouting on size is just one of the most important principles. All members have to get the chance of choosing what kind of group they prefer, a fully full AKB group, a specific branch or just a regular group. So some AKB members finally become a leader, but this asks specific guidance um, as they, uh, while they are being, in, uh, being a leader. So it's not for every member possible. Some groups have a division for adult members, but as in Flanders, scouting is um, youth work. Um, special attention must be given to the transfer of members to other forms of free time activities for adults, because unfortunately, they cannot stay forever in scouting. So I've been
been an AKB leader for three years. Um, it were years full of fun, and I learned a lot about the beautiful art of the, uh, diversity. But maybe the most important thing is uh, the recognition you receive from your members is indescribable. So then I come to the second initiative, which is Open Camp. <coughs> It's a bit the same underlying story as what I told before. Although we are open for everyone, Scouts and Gids of Vlaanderen cannot reach all people, all kids through regular weekly scouting. But we found a successful initiative, uh, alternative by the initiative of open camps for children of poor families. In summertime, they can participate in a real scout camp without being a member um, of scouting through the year. Uh, the open camps are organized regionally. So the goal of this initiative is first to let children taste um, of the game of scouting and second um, for the leaders to learn more about this target group of poor children. The methods are the same as any scouts camp. Uh, we go camping, uh, all the activities are the same, living together is similar. But the big difference is that in many ways you have to start from zero. Because uh, on that scouts camp, the children do not all know each other in advance. Also, the leaders know them, know each other just some weeks before the camp. And they meet their kids only some time ago uh, to a home visit. Of course, during the years, there are many diehards between the members and the leaders that want to participate every year again. So I was a leader on one regional open camp and I helped to uh, organize some years ago a very huge open camp where many different open uh, regionally based open camps were organized at the same time uh, and the same moment. So I experienced that as a leader such an open camp is a more intense experience than a whole year of regular scouting. If the children are enthusiastic, they show it with many gestures and words. If they find something unfair, they will do anything to get the knowledge that they are right. Um, and if something's wrong, you will see something is wrong, you will see it directly. This all means that in the end of the camp, the farewell is even more intense than on any other camp. Um, and you, as a leader, lives as a more richer person. So, then I come to the third and the last initiative I want to talk about. It's called Uitwijkers. Uh, as you saw before, um, sorry, <laughs> as you saw before on the picture, I think, um, it's a very colorful car, little bus full of material for sports and games. Uh, the philosophy behind is that if children cannot come to scouting, we go to them. Uh, as an example of outreach youth work, we go with this bus, with outreach youth work, it's an example of that. We go with this bus to public areas in poor neighborhoods where the children living there can taste the way of scouting and we can involve the parents at the same time. So when we park 
um, the kind those public places we one moment <laughs> we unload the orange boxes and start playing uh, we play many games as we do also on weekly regular scouts meetings but a big difference is that kids can come and leave whenever they want as they are more home in the neighborhood than we we are just visitors that offer activities this means that we have to continue the whole time to affect their attention uh, another difference is that games that are very simple uh, for experienced scouts members are often brand new for the kids where that we reach with the earthworkers. Many of those children do not speak Dutch at their homes. So this all challenges us as, a leaders, as leaders to test new and different ways of explanation and interaction. The goal is not in first place uh, to attract new members to local groups. Uh, this initiative has a threefold goal. Uh, first, let the children and their parents in their neighborhoods experience via games what scouting is. Second, let leaders meet and learn about children in vulnerable environments. And third, let us learn about ourselves and uh, experiment by new scouting methods, by this case, outreach youth work. So I personally, um, when different times playing with the Uitwijkers, also this was a very enriching experience. So I come to the end of what I want to tell. Um, I hope you enjoyed what I told and that you understood everything. If you have questions, please choose. Um, but please type those questions as it can be a bit difficult because of my hearing disability to understand everything through the video. Thank you. Uh, the first, I suggest that each team of scouts has a team of disabled people an union and the union organized forum forums for disabled at the international level as for the poor disabled uh, some suggest that teach them easy handicraft and search for their buried talent um that's a good opinion i think um the only thing is um in scouts we just do free time so it's not being busy um, during days as other people go to work so but i think a team yeah in, in flanders scouts in it's of Flanders, we also have a team especially for akb so the second question is how do you fund the costs uh, of having a colorful bus what do you think it costs your scouts each year for the resort um well the first time we gave the challenge to a school of students um where yeah, it was secondary school and they tried to um they developed the car the first time um, with that project, we won a prize and we got some extra funding from that, um, which helps us to go the next years. But I think the rest of the funding is, uh, I, I think, on the national level, Scouts in Gids of Vlaanderen, they support the idea of that. So they give us each year some material but i've no idea it doesn't have to cost every year new things when you have the car and we painted it 
together with leaders just it doesn't has to cost extra things the only thing is the material but sometimes you get material from other groups so i hope this was an answer uh the third is what is your favorite project uh, i thought about it but believe it or not i cannot really say which is my favorite um the open camp for example was very tiring um it was also tiring in an emotional way but i learned and experienced more than in normal scouting and I like the intensity of this camp. Um, the Uitwijkers, uh, so the, the other initiative, is a very interesting way to explore new methods, such as outreaching work, youth work in this case. You can also explore um, new areas in the city of village and encounter uh, new groups of children so you learn a lot of it but uh, as an AKB leader in contrast to the other two initiatives you have a whole year to build um, to build a tight relationship with your members with the scouts camp as a climax of the wonderful year so it's difficult to choose Okay, I take the next one. <laughs> Are there specific uh, limitations of this project? Of course there are. Um, for example, in the Uitwijker, there's no continuity in this way of scouting. So, nor for the children, nor for the leaders. We always go to different places with a different composition of leaders um and we meet new kids so as a consequence if the children asks us very enthusiastic when we come back we cannot promise them often anything so um a limitation of akb is there are often waiting lists um Unfortunately, we cannot welcome all those kids that want to play the game of scouting. Uh, we need enough leaders to do, to do that. Uh, and in contrast to regular groups, not every member has the possibility to become a leader. So they, um, yeah, it's not always possible because of their possibilities. So they have to stop and they cannot go further to a leader. So it's often a pity. And a limitation of open camp. Uh, it often means that you have to search every year to find enough leaders as there is no, there are no activities through the year. So every, every year again, you must think about new leaders or so. So. This was this question. Can you share with us your favorite memory running these projects? It's difficult. As I told before, it's difficult to say which one is my favorite. Um, I must think about it. My favorite memory. Um, you have, for example, with the Uitwijkers, often those kids don't know anything about um, organized youth work. So if they play and we see them enjoying the play that we offer them, um, they sometimes come to thank us and even the parents come to us and when we see them laughing, it's really beautiful to see that so you get a lot of that but it's difficult to say if it's my favorite memories just a good memory so uh, then i take the next if i have time yeah. 
Uh, wait a moment. Um, are the children and parents? Oh, one is gone. Okay. These are great examples of scouts being messengers of peace and creating a better world. How do you get scouts for all your projects? How do you get scouts for all those projects? So by team diversity, we, yeah, a big part of our work is making the promotion of, of all those initiatives. But I must say that um, AKB exists already so long that, yeah, there are so many local groups of that that um, we don't have to promote it anymore. It promotes itself. Um, a bit the same with open camps. There are steering committees of the open camp in general and they uh, network actively. Um, they network actively with many um, yeah, organizations, I don't know, um yeah in, in in flanders we have something specific uh, specifically it was just a notice on the screen <laughs> um in in belgium we have something specifically where poor people can go to to get um a, a kind of funding because of they are poor and so by networking by them, the kids come. For the, I was telling about open camp, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, it's always searching again for new people to be a leader there. But there are also people coming not from Scouts, but it's a Scouts project. And Earthworkers, yeah, it's more, how to say, ad hoc. So, in fact, it's not every week or every month. So a specific scouts, local scout group can ask for the earthworker and just go in their city or village. So I hope that's a question and answer. Uh, are the children and parents uh, real nervous to come and participate with you? From the earthworker, I think. Um, really nervous not sometimes in the beginning it takes um it takes some some time when the kids come so when we just arrive there and if there are no kids on that place playing or so we just go around and just call every house if there are kids we have activities if you want to come and when we can start with some kids Others just see it and come joining us. So I don't think they are really nervous, but they really, for example, the parents, they really appreciate if you just also give attention to them and make a short talk with them. So not only the kid. Uh, the next question. What are the favorite activities for kids with disabilities? Well, in fact, I think all kinds of activities, it's just individually based, just like any regular scouts member, there are differences between. So you cannot really say what in general are the most favored um, activities for them. Just try any kind of activity you think and just see what you have to adapt uh, to that kind of activity. So just try all. <laughs> uh, the next question. If anyone would like to start working on diversity and inclusion in their communities, do you have any tips on how they can start? Um, I think in Scouts and Gids of Vlaanderen, we have already a, a quite long history of working on diversity. Um, but if you start from zero, just start small. You don't have to start at every, um, 
every group of kids, every target group together. Just keep one small thing and start trying to reach that specific target group. Um, just try something and maybe you feel maybe you cannot reach that group, but then go on and, and try again. So it, it won't work from the first moment. So we also, we have difficulties for, um, yeah, in, in um, doing some projects, but then we just try it in another way. So there's not one, one way that you can do everything. Oh, non one, not one. Wait, I'm asking for the right word. Tool for the word. Magic word. Yeah, not one magic word. How you have to start? Just maybe the only thing is start small and try things, and don't be afraid to fail sometimes. So you can learn a lot to, from failing. So I hope it's uh, an answer. <laughs> okay. Right, so, right. There's another question on the right. There is one from French. Yes. Is it okay? I think it's finished, but I see a question from Peter on the right. We have one more question, and it says, uh, what do you do when a young person that cannot participate in an activity uh, because of a physic, um, physic, yeah, because of a physical problem, yeah. Yeah. Uh, en Uh, the last, can I answer in English? I hope, okay. <coughs> um, it just, when I said about um, AKB, it's uh, scouting on size. So in fact, you don't have to go, uh, you don't have to think this activity is for the whole group. Um, but just to go, you'd see to everyone specifically. And some of the kids, maybe they need some more time just to slow down, just let them. Maybe, but try to involve them the next time. So, because you work on size, it's really possible that you, um, it's really possible that you uh, stop that some kids do not participate at the same moment because let them just let them if they need some rest maybe 10 minutes later they want to join so kan u ik denk dat denk dat de vraag is van uh, wat dat er iemand niet mee kan doen door een fysische beperking maar in a cabin ja yeah. dan kunnen we misschien erover op de groep nadenken hoe dat gaat Dat zou kunnen oplossen, zodat die persoon wel kan winnen, dat heel de groep erin betrokken wordt. Ja, ja. Ja, was uh, my boyfriend was listening too, and he was thinking too. He's a scouter too. Um, but he says maybe you can think with the whole group how you can adapt the activity so that that member can join. So in fact. It's the opposite way as thinking, I have an activity and anyone has to adapt to the activity. You just turn it in the opposite way and you think, okay, I have an activity, I have the members, but how can I adapt my activity so that all members can join? So maybe you find different rules and make some things easier for one if their possibilities are different, not less, but different. So, okay. Mm -hmm. I hope this uh, an answer. 
Um, what are some tips you can give us to work with people who have hearing losses? <laughs> um, <laughs> typing? <laughs> no, just there's no no general rule to work with people with uh, hearing loss. Um, you have to ask to the person, him or herself, what you can do for him or her, that he, yeah, he or she can understand you better. So for some people, it's just write the question down. For another people, another person is just repeat it um yeah just uh, an important thing is if you want to say something to a person with hearing loss um you must see that he or she sees that you are talking to them so if you stand uh, in the back of them and they cannot see you they often will not hear you. So if they do not react then, it's just because they didn't hear at all. But if you stand in front of them and just say, hello, I want to say something to you, um, then it's easier for them, for us <laughs> to understand. Um, you have no general rule. Yeah, it's maybe, um, seeing seeing the person that you are talking but often people with a hearing loss they need to read lips so you have don't have to pronounce extra but you just have to talk no on a normal way um but just maybe uh speak a bit slower so okay no new topics. I All think right. it's finished. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carlene, for joining us today. I think uh, you will help most of the people that were present, and they will also be able to see this presentation in the in the future. Um, thank you for all your contributions. I'm sure you will help a lot of people out there with your projects. Um, also, I would like everyone to remember that our next campfire it's uh, Saturday, October 15 at 19 GMT. Uh, it's about uh, diversity and inclusion in the Inter-America region. So, Carlin, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for this lovely time we had today. Uh, well, I guess uh, we'll see you together in the future campfires, all right? Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thank you, thank you. Maybe I need after I